It'll just be one moment, and when it's live, I'll let you know. Okay, we can begin. Great, thanks, Ilona. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, and to welcome everybody uh, to our meeting. I particularly wanted to uh, welcome um, Doug Ford, or Don Ford, sorry, Don. Um, he's acting as a proxy for Cassandra Banting. Um, she appointed him as um, his proxy um, for the June meeting. And um, she's uh, left Oxford County for other pastors, and we hope to have a replacement for Cassandra for the September meeting. I also wanted to mention that this is um, Tom Neville's last meeting. Tom has been a committee member for the last four years, and um, his inputs and um, insights into how the program has developed and, and is ongoing have been really appreciated, Tom and we wish you well in all your future endeavors. Uh, Tom was a public representative and uh, we also hope to have a replacement for Tom for our September meeting. I just wanted to go over a couple of the um, procedure matters for the Zoom call. Um, as Ilona mentioned, the meeting is being recorded and um, it's live streamed on the GRCA YouTube channel and it can be seen as a webcast on sourcewater.ca. Ilona is going to call the roll and um, if she doesn't call your name and you're in attendance please um, bring that to our attention and speak up. For motions they're printed on the agenda and if you wish to move or second a, um, a, a resolution please unmute yourself and, and say your name and we'll try it that way. Uh, with voting, if you'd raise your hand physically um, so that we can see it on the screen. And for those of you who are on a phone link, um, if you're opposed to the motion, speak up. Otherwise, we'll just assume that you are in favor of it. Um, if you have questions or comments, raise your hand. Uh, and I'll try to take them in order. And for those on the phone, you'll have to speak up to um, advise that you wish to, to ask a question or you have a comment. So with that out of the way, Ilona, would you, um, would you call the roll, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry, just one moment. I have a phone message that's going to be going off in my other room. You can't get it, okay, sorry. Hopefully everybody can hear me over the answering machine picking up the phone. So I'll start with Don Ford, proxy for Cassandra Banting. Yeah. Brad Carberry. Present. Present. Thank you, Alan Dale. Present. Linda Dixon. Wait a second, wait a second. Present. Paul Emerson. Present. Thank you. Andrew Henry. Present. Eric Hodgins. Present. And Ken Hunsberger. Here at home. Kathy Jameson. I believe is absent. Jim Kirchin. Here. Ralph Kruger. Present. Ian McDonald. Absent. Tom Nevels. Here. Lloyd Perrin. Peter Here. Ryder. Here. Thank you. Thank you. George Schneider. Here. Uh, not sure why it says B. Carberry. 
<laughs> we'll change that. Thank <laughs> you. Martin can go ahead and change that. Do you mind doing that, Martin? Uh, John Sapoulis. Present. Bill Strauss, I know, is present. Here. Thank you. Ryan Taylor. Absent. Bill Unger. Ryan Whitwell. Absent. Phil Wilson. Present. Perfect. Perfect. We have 17 members present and quorum has been met. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I have some very brief chair's remarks just to update you of meetings I've attended since our last source protection committee meeting. There's been ongoing meetings and discussions relating to the development of the water quantity policies for Guelph, Guelph Aramosa. And uh, Martin has a report on the agenda that'll give you a lot more detail on that. And then earlier this week, there was a chair's teleconference. Uh, the chairs from all of the source protection committees in Ontario, as well as the program managers get together uh, and meet. Uh, we had a, a Zoom meet type meeting uh, four times a year. Uh, this one lasted three hours. We had a really good discussion. It was sort of a combination of the ministry updating us on a number of items and um, the uh, committees updating the ministry on how things are going in terms of plan implementation or what areas we're working on. And um, as you can tell from the agenda, we've been pretty busy um, at the Lake Erie uh, committee end. And um, so it was a really, really, really good discussion. We've talked about maybe having more frequent meetings because we always seem to run out of time. Um, one of the things that they did do was update us on the um, regulatory proposals for the Conservation Authority Act, particularly as they related to source water protection. And Martin has more detail in his report. In addition, they're working on some best practices for drinking water systems outside the, uh, those covered under the Clean Water Act. And there was a couple of really good presentations on um, drinking water systems and small drinking water systems and when they bring forward their best practices manual, we'll be sure to include those with um, that information and we can have a, a further discussion at a future meeting. Um, that's pretty well it. Uh, and so Martin um, will address um, the other, the issues in, in more detail as part of his um, program update. You have a copy of the agenda. Is there any additions to the agenda? Martin, did you want to mention the one email that you sent out shortly before the meeting at this point as part of an amended agenda? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, Wendy, that would be a bit good idea to quickly just remind uh, members that we had a, a very late uh, amendment to the agenda. It was uh, just uh, sent out before lunch or just around lunchtime. And it uh, affects uh, one of the comments that we, the public uh, consultation comments that we missed to include in, in the table. So the, uh, the amended agenda is an amendment to report 0604 for Wellington Waterloo section 34 uh, plan update. And there's an additional row 27 that has been included in table uh, table one uh, to address that comment uh, and, and the response. Um, now, I, we also just uh, more administratively, we uh, was just asking Alona before, but we don't know. Uh, we have a phone number 226-979-2465, uh, but we don't know who's called in on that number just to confirm. Brad Carberry. Oh, that's... Brad Carberry. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Brad. And and Martin, um, members can see the update to the agenda on uh, eScribe. 
thank you. Yes, uh, eScribe has been updated as well as the, the agenda package on the website. So it's uh, publicly available as well. Good, thank you. Um, are there any other changes or additions to the agenda? Can I, have a, can I have a mover to accept the agenda? Bill Stroh, I move it. Thank you, Bill. Seconder, Lloyd Perrin. Andrew Henry, I'll second. Okay. Um, Andrew, I had Lloyd put his hand up ahead of you, so the minutes will reflect Lloyd, um, if that's okay. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? It's carried unanimously. George, you don't have your video on, so I can't see you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's okay as, as long as you're good with it. Um, any declarations of pecuniary interest? Um, minutes of the previous meeting they were circulated. Any questions, comments? Can I have a mover for the minutes, please? Alan Dale, Paul Great. Emerson, Paul Emerson seconding. Um, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried unanimously, thank you. We have um, no delegations, no presentations, no correspondence. And the first report we have is Martin's update on the source protection program. So Martin, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so you have the report in front of you, hopefully. I'll just go through a number of highlights. Uh, we just want to quickly mention that we've changed some of the administrative protocols. So we're publicly posting the agenda uh, at the same time that uh, members will receive it on Friday before the meeting. Um, and is with respect to the environmental registry posting um, on the update and the decisions around the Ontario Water Quality Management Framework, we did promise to bring a report back to the committee and that will be uh, at a future meeting. We weren't able to do that for this meeting. Um, quick mention of that, that we received the grant uh, funding agreement uh, for this fiscal uh, until the end of March, 2022. And um, as Wendy already mentioned, uh, the ministry is working on uh, the best practices guide for non-municipal systems outside uh, the Clean Water Act. So we will certainly bring a report back to the committee uh, together with uh, some of the, the, the two presentations that Wendy mentioned um, to, to deal with that at the future meeting. Uh, with regards to the phase two changes of the technical rules uh, at the chair's meeting on Monday, uh, the ministry did mention um, I didn't have that uh, information when I wrote the agenda package of this report that the ministry is expecting to release that those changes to the director of technical rules uh, soon as well. Um, I guess it depends to what, what soon means. I mean, the ministry has certainly uh, been working on that for um, and been diligently addressing the comments. So hopefully that will be coming out soon and we can address um, and work on, on any of the updates that are in, uh, as a result of those. Uh, I did want to spend a little bit of time on the update on changes to the Conservation Authorities Act. Uh, you will see from, uh, from the report, our overall uh, process is that we, were, uh, we, meaning the GRCA, is bringing a fulsome report to the, the GRCA board. Their meeting is next Friday on the 25th. Uh, that agenda package is going out tomorrow, will be publicly available for everybody to look at. Comments are uh, due by the Sunday, uh, June the 27th. With respect to the Clean Water Act, it's obviously only a short portion of the, of the CA Act uh, proposed changes. Uh, but with respect to our program, overall, a fairly little change, really. Uh, we have the Clean Water Act and its regulations. There's no uh, changes to those, to that legislative framework uh, proposed. So nothing will change on that front. There are, uh, however, uh, the ministry is proposing to include um, in the CA Act regulations um, the kind of the package of what the source protection authorities are 
required to do um, in, in, as a mandatory program. And we should um, be, it should be noted that that including the, the responsibilities and the roles of a source protection authority under the CA Act regulation uh, and, and including it as a mandatory program that really enables a transfer of funding of, uh, to support this program from the province to municipal levy. Uh, that has not happened, um, but it is uh, enabled through this transfer. Um, in terms of, as you just mentioned, that we have received the provincial funding uh, until until uh, March uh, next year. But certainly, this this proposal is is enabling that that, that transfer. Uh, with respect to the uh, specific responsibilities, there are a couple of things that I mentioned in in the report that potentially are additional uh, responsibilities. Uh, with respect to reviewing uh, proposals, development proposals uh, for municipalities, um, as well as uh, completing some of those, some of the updates uh, with regard to some of the calculations on managed lands, so technical calculations that needed are needed for identifying significant drinking water threats. We will be recommending some wording changes uh, rather than saying completion of those calculations. We would uh, prefer that it would say incorporating those uh, calculations which would then leave the flexibility on how is that, who is actually doing the work up to, uh, to a local decision. It could be the municipality or it could be the conservation authority. Um, as well as for the, for the review of the pro development proposal, we suggest that this should be uh, a support for municipal staff to be able to do those revisions or sorry, those reviews uh, and, uh, uh, and in response to a request by the municipality. Uh, so it, again, it, so we have local flexibility to figure out how those reviews will be will be handled. Um, other than that, um, uh, just uh, the report includes a meeting outlook. Uh, most of the uh, items are that are in that table, as well as described, will be addressed in uh, in specific reports on this agenda. Uh, the exception is the town of Shelburne and um, one of the wells for for Guelph, which is in a future update uh, that is not yet. Um, there's no specific report on those. Uh, but as you can see, we're, we're working uh, diligently on, on those Section 34 updates. The big one is in front of you um, at, a, at one of the next agenda items. Uh, there's a, fur a further one for Grand Valley coming up. We're working on the Guelph Guelph Formosa policy development. And further to the Section 34s, we're also working on two Section 36 work uh, plan updates, uh, one for Catfish Creek and the other one for Kettle Creek. Uh, so that's my report. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Martin? Andrew? Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. A uh, quick question regarding the Conservation Authorities Act proposed changes. So I, like I agree, I was a little surprised that, uh, that they were proposing that the Conservation Authorities really uh, lead the, uh, the assessments related to uh, drinking water and that sort of thing. I didn't, that didn't make sense to me, and I and I'm and I, I understand you correctly. I think you're in support of what we have now, where municipalities lead and the CAs uh, support that process. Do I understand that? Um, thank you, Andrew. Yes, and through you, Madam Chair, um, I did ra raise those two points at the chair's meeting as well. And the response I received is that we, I was focusing more on the section 34, and I think the arrangement that we have is that municipalities or the system owners do most of the technical work, and then we incorporate those technical uh, updates into the assessment report and plan. That's certainly working, and I think that's um, an acceptable way to do things. I believe that the ministry is looking at it a little more broadly, uh, also with, with respect to some of the section 36 updates, where in some cases, maybe there is not necessarily a specific system owner or a system municipality that may do the work, but there's maybe uh, occasions or cases that where the where the this conservation authority is is doing updates or or changes, which um, if it's if it's handled flexible uh, with regards to the to the wording and the regulation, I would be okay with that. I would like to have the local flexibility so we can work with individual municipalities and um, and system owners to to work through things. Andrew, do you have a follow up question? Yeah. So there was also a note in there about uh, the ability to uh, essentially the the uh, uh, supporting of the um, of the of the mandatory program under the essentially related to source protection would be transferred to the municipal levy. How would that work? Where 
an intake and its associated uh, uh, treatment facility or supply system benefits municipalities that are outside of the conservation authorities jurisdiction. So in, in my particular case, the intake mm -hmm. is, uh, is in central Elgin and within the uh, Kettle Creek uh, uh, region. Um, but the majority of the benefiting municipalities are actually outside of the Kettle Creek region. Um, and, and Kettle Creek would have no ability uh, to, uh, to add that to the levy or to their, to their levy. And, and uh, they have no ability to charge the water utility which is separate and distinct from, from the municipalities. So I, I'm not clear how that would work. Thank you for the question in three, Madam Chair. Uh, and we don't have a, we don't know that either. Um, now there is, there is, I see the Olga has her hand up as well, but uh, from what I understand, there's a second phase. Uh, if you look at the euro posting, this is phase one uh, with the MECP proposed uh, guidance or proposed regulations. There's a second phase uh, of the regulation that are coming out uh, from the MNRF, as, from what I understand. I don't know exact timing of that, but it's supposed to be fairly soon. Um, that will deal with the, the municipal levy and, and the regulation supporting that. Uh, we certainly uh, are very aware of some of the challenges with respect to um, apportioning or, or allocating levy dollars to program that are not specifically uh, applied to the specific watershed. It's not even within Lake Erie region, um, like Grand River uh, levy dollars would not be able to be applied for long point cattle and catfish and vice versa. So there's certainly a lot of challenges that uh, we, um, we, we have, uh, I guess, made note of and, and forwarded to the ministry so they're aware. Uh, we'll have to see how it's been addressed uh, through that second phase of the regulation. Olga, did you have a comment? Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to um, reiterate what Martin said earlier about, um, so, so the, the change under the CA Act, it certainly does enable uh, a conservation authority to levy their municipalities without an agreement for uh, activities under the Clean Water Act. But it, from what I've heard from our branch management, senior management, that's not a signal of an intention for these activities that conservation authorities are currently conducting as source protection authorities under the Clean Water Act. The intention is not for that to shift uh, to, to municipal funding through the levy. So we're committed to continuing to provide the provincial funding as we have this year and, and next year as, as um, Martin was saying about our transfer payment agreement. So I just wanted to clarify that, that I think uh, absolutely a fair discussion and questions, but, but we, I just wanted to, you know, just sort of um, emphasize that everything that I am hearing so far from our senior management is that um, the intention is continue to fund these and not to transfer some of these things that are itemized in the proposal under the Conservation Authorities Act as it relates to the Clean Water Act. Uh, the intention is not for that to now shift to being funded through the municipal levy. Okay. Any further questions? Paul? Uh, thank, thanks, Madam Chair. This is maybe to uh, Olga or, I don't know, Martin, you would know. But can you just describe really simply how you think the Source Protection Committee, as we have it established now, this group, the functions we're going to have vis-a-vis -vis the new functions for the Conservation Authority? Like just in simple terms. I can maybe start off, Paul, by saying that the at the chair's um, teleconference, uh, they really, um, in their presentation, said there's no surprises, and basically there's no change in terms of how the source water um, responsibilities would would happen um, under the the new Conservation Authorities Act. I don't have the details about the other parts of the program, but certainly that was the message to us as chairs and also that the province was going to continue to fund the source water protection program. So Martin, maybe you can look at it from the conservation authority perspective, but that's certainly what the chairs were told by the assistant deputy minister and her staff earlier this week. Thanks, Wendy. 
Yeah, I can I can just add and confirm really um, that yes, the, the message is, is that there's no change to the role and responsibility of the committee. Um, so there's no change because there's no change to the, the Clean Water Act and its regulations. And there's no change to the relationship between the source protection authority and the source protection committee. That all stays the same. It's that it's just that through this CA Act regulation, uh, th those I, those responsibilities that the authority has already has um, are listed also in the CA Act regulation. Um, to and again, that's to enable that transfer. Even though that we have had uh, confirmation from uh, in funding for the next for this fiscal and, and certainly the, um, the the messages are that the, the ministry is continuing to fund it. Um, so there's no change to to the role of the committee and there's no change to the actual role of the authority. It's just, if I could, Madam Chair, it's just that now the conservation authorities for the work that they're doing under the Act can levy, levy the municipalities. Correct. Can, it, it's an option that is now, if that goes through, obviously, um, that is then uh, available. Okay. Any other questions? Tom? Uh, yes, thanks, Madam Chair. I guess just to throw in my two cents worth here. Um, I understand how the conservation authorities work, having been both with GRCA and Credit Valley, and now how the source protection works, having been with, with this group. I, I don't see how levy can possibly work. Um, there are many municipalities who have no drinking water systems at all within Grand River. For instance, the town of Erin has one, but it's in the Credit Valley system. It's not within Grand River. Uh, Melanchthon doesn't have any at all, um, although they have encroaching protection zones from outside municipalities. Um, so conservation authorities work very much on a watershed basis. Source water protection is very municipal specific. And so I don't understand at all how levy could possibly be imposed on a watershed basis for source water protection. Uh, so I guess uh, my thought is, uh, and I understand what Olga has said that it's not their intent necessarily to do that, but I think if it's not their intent to do that, then they should just remove it as a proposal uh, because I, I, I foresee a nightmare trying to get that done from my perspective and my experience working with conservation authorities and levies and all those kinds of things. So uh, I, I just can't see how that possibly can work when you, so when source water is so municipally specific, uh, it's not watershed based really um, at all. So uh, I, I think if, if their intent is not to use it, then they should probably remove it. Thank you. Okay, Martin, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, Madam Chair, it's uh, an accurate assessment, I think. Okay. Linda? Yeah, I just, I, I just wanna say, uh, Madam Chair, uh, through you to, to Tom, that you uh, echoed a lot of the uh, things I've been already thinking as well too, so thank you. Any other comments? Uh, Paul? No, uh, Wendy, <laughs> I have to jump in here. No. As a former CA person and, uh, and back uh, heavily involved when they were doing these things back in with, the, with Justice O'Connor's thing. Um, and not to counter what Tom was saying, because I respect Tom a great deal. I always enjoyed you as a board member, but there are certain aspects of source water protection that transcend municipal boundaries. That's, that's the bottom line principle. And uh, it's not where you stick the pipe in the ground and, and suck the water out or, or when you put the pipe into the river and suck the water out of the river at that point, that's not the source. The source is, is the, wa the watersheds upstream that feed those rivers and feed those groundwater systems. So I think we all know that. And I think if some, 
I understand what Tom's saying up at the northern part of the watershed. You think, well, why pay municipal levy? This was an ongoing problem, not only in the Grand, but everywhere. Um, what benefit am I getting? Because the benefit tends to accrue down to the downstream water users. And yet we're paying for that. Uh, that always is a bit of a challenge, but there, one way levy can be assessed is a special benefiting municipalities. There's, there's, there's many examples of that. So it doesn't have to be an across the board levy or it can be an apportioned levy. It can take some work, but I just have to say that a lot of source water protection transcends municipal boundaries. We can't forget that. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? I don't see Andrew. any. Andrew. Oh, sorry, Andrew. Thank you. Go ahead. I just wanted to uh, add to Paul's comment that unfortunately it also transcends the boundaries of conservation authorities. Um, like for example, the utilities that I'm responsible for, we cross uh, in our total service area, we cross four conservation authorities. Um, and, you know, they, the other conservation authorities have no uh, involvement in our activities or source protection, except for, you know, in this particular case. So it's a difficult situation. And I think it has to be well thought through before even municipal levies are contemplated. Linda? Yeah, thank you for that. And and as I said, I, I Tom echoed a lot of my comments and Paul, I, I I very much appreciate what you're saying. And I understand in working with conservation authorities over the years, um, the challenges. I think it kind of comes to what Andrew says is, is my concern is is that we often see this with legislation is that a there's that opportunity to try and put everything in one basket and make it fit for everybody. And oftentimes that's not what happens and there's real challenges with that. So I think Martin alluded to it when he was talking about the, um, I think it was the section 34 changes in that and that to try and keep things as flexible and open as possible. And that once you start getting into very things that are really, really specific, um, it can cause great challenges when you're trying to, to implement this stuff. So that, that's what I'm seeing and, and that's my concern. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? I'm not seeing any. Could I have a mover please for Martin's report? Linda? I'll move it, thank you. Andrew, I'll second. Thank you, Andrew. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? Thank you, the motion's carried unanimously. The next report um, is an update on the Guelph, Guelph Aramosa water quantity policy uh, development. Martin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, so uh, this is a continuation of the report or uh, a subsequent update uh, of what we presented in April. Uh, so additional meetings have been had, additional development discussions on development of the policies have uh, been had at the project team. And I'm not gonna go through the, obviously we've got the table attached with the revisions, uh, the, the updates, you will have seen that they're highlighted in yellow where they, um, there's new and revised policies. Uh, we've also now, and I'm gonna spend a little bit of time to explain how, um, how we now included uh, a subset of policies that are going to be applicable. It's all draft obviously for now applicable in the intake protection zone quantity. And I've got a map in the, um, we've got a map in the report that you can see the, the extent of that intake protection zone. Uh, just a quick um, summary of, of how that uh, intake protection zone is linked to the water quantity, uh, water protection area. Um, the Aramosa River intake, and it's situated outside the city of Guelph, but it's a city of Guelph intake of the river. It's situated in Puzzlinch. Uh, there's the Arkel uh, water wells, uh, supply wells system uh, right next to it. And there's also what's called the Glen Collector. Um, essentially, conceptually, what, the, what is being done is that the river water out of the Hermosa River is being 
uh, take out, not all of it, obviously, but there's a, there's a permit to take water, to take river water out of the river, and it's artificially being recharged through that land collector into the ground and then um, essentially pumped out again uh, through the wells. So there's a hydrologic connection between uh, the, the, the catchment area upstream of the intake uh, with respect to impacting uh, or influencing um, the, the water that is available uh, in those wells uh, for the city of Guelph to, uh, for the system to, to be taken out of the ground. So that's, uh, there has not been a specific risk assessment done for the intake protection zone quantity. Um, it's been assigned the same level of risk as the water protection area quantity, so it's significant. Um, and we have, uh, essentially, um, through development uh, discussion, development sorry, policy development discussions now have uh, come up with a proposal uh, to apply a subset of the water quantity policies uh, that are uh, being developed in uh, in the well protection area quantity. A subset of those would also apply in the intake protection zone. Um, the the impacts from any takings or any development that would reduce recharge in the IPZQ um, is not direct. I, I think the report, I, I used the word, it's indirect, that, that connection, the hydrologic connection is there. Um, but that has to be reflected in, in the policies. Uh, hence, there's a subset of policies that apply, not all of them, because we don't feel um, the, the, the measures that are applicable in well protection area quantity all need to be uh, applicable in IPZQ. And that's specifically in its relation to some of the Planning Act policies uh, where um, in the WAPAQ they are more stringent with respect to asking for technical studies and making sure uh, that takings as well as uh, uh, recharge reduction activities, developments, uh, really uh, consider source protection. The, the, the threshold really is a little lower in IPZQ. With respect to the uh, development of those policies, they've been done in conjunction of like Wellington and Halton specifically, because those are the two uh, municipalities um, that are impacted or influenced by this, that, that that's where the, the jurisdictionally the, the IPCQ is. And we've, uh, we've tried as much as possible to have a consistent approach between uh, the IPCQ policies in Wellington, in, that will be in the Wellington chapter as well as in the Halton chapter. There's a couple of policies I uh, believe that we're still working on, so there's certainly more updates to be done, uh, as well as um, likely or possibly some revisions through further discussions. So they're, they're draft at the moment, but you can see them in the table. They're highlighted with a, with a purple frame uh, around, around, the, uh, around those policies. Um, I did want to quickly just uh, touch base on, this is on page eight, um, just a summary of those policies that we've now included uh, further to what has been presented in April. Um, and specifically, I'd like to um, just fo um, focus on one of the, we call it the EASER policy, that's an environmental activity and sector registry um, registrations. Uh, it's a policy that is, is a good example of, of what has, we, we, we were not aware of those uh, of the importance, I guess, and, or the, the influence of, of some of those uh, other programs that the ministry has and, and how it could influence or, or be part of, a, of this water quali quality policy um, kind of package. Um, so over the, through the discussions um, and certainly through some of the, the changes that have been proposed by the ministry on, on that easer, uh, the environmental activity and sector registry, um, that, that program, we've come to a realization that it, it would be beneficial to have a policy to, uh, to have those notifications. And maybe I should back up a little bit just to explain that the easer, that that registry is for activities that the ministry is deeming not um, significant enough to require a permit, a permit to take water. Um, those may be construction sites, uh, like um, dewatering for construction sites. So they'll be they're temporary, uh, things like that. Um, so they would they would have to be the proponent is, is required to to uh, to register those uh, those activities though, and really the, the what we are proposing in the policy is that uh, those registrations those are notified the municipalities and the, the system owner is is notified, and uh, ideally with an update to the regulation so it's automated um, and it can be you know, sent out as as any time that one of those registry. Uh, registrations is, is being, uh, being put, put active. Um, the second one uh, I want, just wanted to highlight 
uh, it's a revision to what we call the coordination policy. Um, it's, I believe, one of the pillars of, um, of, of our policy set, certainly together with many other ones, but it's, it's one of the act activities that we'd like to um, really uh, promote and enhance, and that is the coordination, the information sharing, uh, the, the, the collaboration, hopefully, between the different parties on, on the many items that are, that are affected by, uh, by, by this water quantity and a significant risk level. It's, it may have to do with uh, drought management plans. It may have to do with um, further sharing some of those ESA registrations. It may be due with climate change assessments, uh, updates to the tier three model, uh, information sharing on specific permits to take water that, uh, that may have influence uh, beyond municipal boundaries. Um, so uh, certainly coordination uh, between the different parties, and that would include the, uh, the provincial ministries, uh, not just Ministry of Environment and Conservation and Parks, but also MNRF and potentially others, uh, the Conservation Authority, obviously, as well as the municipalities. So I just wanted to add that that is, and we've, we've done some, some updates to, uh, to how we, how we uh, phrase, I guess, the, the, the language around the, the, that information sharing. Um, there's certainly a, um, an emphasis on uh, that we will be developing in terms of reference uh, within the first uh, first year after the, the plan is, would be approved uh, to, to kind of document the, the specifics of, of what is essentially probably going to be some kind of working group um, that will come together on a regular basis to, to work through some of those issues. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. I'll be open to any questions. Any questions for Martin? Andrew? So Martin, just just for clarification, for with regard to the WAPA-Q and the associated policies, hypothetically, if there was a well used for water bottling within the WAPA-Q and it was sold and a new owner uh, <laughs> were to acquire that well and, and ask for a doubling of the permit to take water, how would these policies and the WAPA-Q impact? Can you walk us through that po process? Like it's... It's one thing to just notify a water utility or a municipality, um, but what's ultimately the implication? And that's that's what I'm looking to understand. Thank you, through you, Madam Chair. And some of what you said is not hypothetical. <laughs> some of it is. Um, so, um, and I, I, I think I admitted a, a part of my report actually to, to mention that there are uh, parallel discussions that are happening between the city and the ministry right now on the prescribed instrument policies, which is obviously where this would be uh, addressed uh, through. Uh, so certainly a part of the, the policy package is that we would direct the, the, the ministry to use their regulatory powers, uh, permit to take water and for the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks and for MNRF, it would be the approval uh, and regulatory powers that they have under the Agriculture Resources Act. Um, so uh, certainly that, the, it would be the ministries through their regulatory powers that it would have to address uh, those uh, um, any changes on, on the permit on the permit front. Now, actually, uh, we were actually um, just to, to note um, uh, Triton uh, Waters, uh, the new owner for Nestle, has um, as we know has um, applied for for a renewal of the existing permit. Um, that is, it's it's certainly the, the exact same taking. So it's not the, the doubling is not <laughs> it's not there, uh, but that the, that process is ongoing right now. Um, there's uh, actually it's uh, the, the commenting period is closing on on June 22nd. Um, so the ministry is right now in the process. Obviously, right now there's no policies source protection policies uh, that are um, that are in place, uh, but that renewal is in, in in process. Once we have an approved plan with uh, the water quality policies, there will be. Policies that will uh, that will talk to and speak to uh, the specific role that the ministry will have with respect to addressing those permit renewals or new permits within the WAPA queue um, for water quantity takings. But it will be something that the ministry will have to do. We we actually the, the one other thing I can mention is that the project team has considered uh, uh, looking at Part Four powers, which is the risk management plans. Um, um, that would be uh, within the purview of, of municipalities to enact under the Clean Water Act, and we could write policies for that. Uh, the decision has been made, uh, certainly right now, 
um, to not have part four powers. Uh, that would be a duplication of the regulatory burden for the proponents and uh, overall a, a duplication of, uh, the reg of kind of the uh, processes and administrative uh, burdens. Um, the decision has been made and is in principle, we've always done that where there's an existing regulatory process, we would use that uh, to manage um, activities that are identified as significant drinking water threats. So in this case, it's the permit to take water program. Thank you. I hope that that answers the question. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, can I'll I have a... Bill Strauss? Bill Strauss, thank you very much, Bill. A seconder. John Sapoulis. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, I'm assuming nobody on the telephone is opposed. Uh, Brad, you were the only other one. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're okay, oh, Brad? All good. Great. Yeah. Moving on then to the next report, which is the um, updated assessment report and protection plan for the town of Grand Valley. And Martin. Thank you, Wendy, for you, Madam Chair. Uh, so this is um, a report in front of you. We are um, looking at a new well, or the, Grand, the town of Grand Valley is looking at a new supply well uh, for their system. Um, the technical work has been completed. Uh, we are ready to uh, go out for pre-consultation following this meeting, um, um, if the, the committee agrees. So the revisions are fairly straightforward. It's a, it's a single supply well. Uh, we've gone through early engagement uh, with the ministry. There's no questions with regard to the technical comment uh, or the technical uh, work that has been done. Uh, well protection areas, all the re relevant information has been completed. Um, oh, Ilona is, is correcting me. We are ready to go for public consultation. We've completed pre-consultation. Thank you, Ilona. Um, so sorry for that. Um, so yes, we've, we've completed pre-consultation. We've re actually received a couple of comments with regards to, to policies from the ministry and those have been addressed uh, with additions of policies. Uh, one of them, for example, a transition policy um, otherwise, we have not received any other comments. Uh, certainly, the technical um, components and everything has been accepted by the uh, by the ministry. Um, so, uh, as well as there have been, I believe, there's four uh, significant drinking water threats activities that have been identified. So, notification letters have been sent out to those property owners, uh, or will be, um, as part of uh, public consultation. Uh, it will. Um, it's proposed to be run for. Um, for the uh, about a month until from June 20 to July 20, 20th. Um, and following that, would we would be coming back with any comments that we would receive from the public uh, back to the September 9th service prediction committee meeting. And then following that, it would be um, going to the authority and, and submitted to the province. Uh, so overall, um, um, yeah, fairly straightforward um, update to the, to the system in, in the town of Grand Valley. I'll Thank be happy you. to answer any questions. Thank you, Martin. Any questions for Martin? John? Yes, uh, what would, would be the format of the public consultation? Will it be a webinar or is it basically uh, public information style? Uh, uh, Martin? Um, th thank you, John, through you, Wendy. Um, so we've actually just, and that's a good question, I should have um, spoken to that. Um, regulatory wise, we are mandated to post it on the internet and request comments. So that's the minimum that we have to do. Certainly all that will be done. Um, and um, because of the, uh, the restrictions, we will typically, we, we have a, a hard copy available in libraries and municipal offices in, in our head office, but that's, that's not gonna be available right now. So it's gonna be online only. We have talked to the town uh, as well as their consultants. And what we're, we're gonna do in addition to that, we're gonna um, have a, on, on our webpage, we're gonna have uh, a presentation, uh, like a slide deck that walks uh, people through 
uh, that that was the request by the municipality to to have additional material posted on the on the website that people can go through and, and get the context and information they need to understand the update. Good. Thank you. Additional questions or comments? Seeing none, can I have a um, mover for the recommendation? Jim Kirchin. Thank you, Jim. Seconder? Linda Dixon, thank you. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? Motions carried unanimously, thank you. Our last report, but certainly not our least report, um, is the um, Section 34 report with the revised um, assessment report and source protection plan for Wellington County and the region of Waterloo. Um, Martin. Thank you, Wendy, through you. So yes, this is um, kind of the final stages of the Section 34 Wellington Waterloo update of the Grand River Source Protection Plan. Uh, you may recall we went through public consultation in earl earlier this year from January to March. Uh, we then made a decision. Originally, we were planning to bring the comments as well as the responses to the April committee meeting. This was postponed uh, to this meeting, so we're now uh, ready to, um, to have the, this report and the comments uh, received as well as the responses in front of you. I would like to first start with uh, a thank you to the project team and the members of the project team specific, uh, like Kyle Davis, Eric Hodgins, as well as Catherine Baker from the ministry uh, for their work together uh, with us to, to bring uh, this, um, to bring together the responses to all the comments that we received. It certainly has been a, quite an effort. Uh, we have received um, a fair number of comments, uh, some of them fairly technical, um, some of them fairly, um, uh, just uh, lengthy, as well as we had a letter writing campaign. Um, we uh, summarized them, but there were 96 specific comments. They were identical with respect to um, one of the updates. Um, so they're all listed uh, in the appendix. Um, we have uh, separated them in in different tables. And I'm just going to explain that. So it has four tables. Two of them are with respect to comments received for the assessment report and two tables with respect to comments received for the source protection plan. Um, table one and three respectively are those comments that are specifically addressing uh, the updates that are in front of us. Uh, with regards to the amendments uh, for Center Wellington, that is with regards to water quality policies for the Center Wellington tier three uh, study, as well as um, in terms of uh, Waterloo, it's with respect to infrastructure changes in Kitchener and Cambridge East. Um, in tables two and four are comments related to assessment report or source for plan, um, comments that we received, or other comments that we received, but that are not directly related uh, to those amendments or to those updates. Uh, so we separated them out uh, for the benefit of the committee, as well as later on for the benefit for the, for the review and approval for the ministry uh, to really um, make sure that we address, that we, we focus on those comments that we need to address with respect to the amendments that are in front of us. Um, I won't go through every single um, of those comments and the responses. Uh, hopefully you, will be able, you have been able to, um, uh, to go through them. Certainly I would be happy to answer any of the questions. Um, but essentially we've, uh, we've addressed all the comments. Um, we've um, and we would be ready to go um, to release uh, the updated plan of this assessment report to the Source Protection Authority uh, at their next meeting, which is next Friday. So the, it will be going out on the agenda package tomorrow um, for submission to the ministry uh, by the authority. Um, we do in our response or in our report, as well as uh, that's going to be going to the authority as well, we include submission comments uh, that um, captured the ongoing work that is still ongoing uh, with regards to the work in the Grand River watershed and, and with respect to the Grand River Source Protection Plan, as well as we have um, comments, there's uh, three of them 
specifically that we've had for a number of years uh, that we consider still important uh, to reiterate uh, with every submission of, of, of an updated plan. Uh, one being the need for long-term multi-year sustainable provincial funding, as we earlier discussed, um, the need for uh, burden reduction, essentially, in terms of the administrative uh, processes, uh, annual reporting, for example, plan update processes, so, uh, and things like that. And also with respect to provincial funding and support for the maintenance of those scientific tools that we have at our disposal, specifically tier three models, but all other surface and groundwater models as well, uh, to, to be able to keep those up to date and, and um, an asset uh, to the program. Uh, I mentioned the timeline, so we're basically right at the end. We would go to the, um, to the Source Collection Authority next Friday, and I just um, um, see that that's, I think, a, a typo in the report. It says August 27, I think we are able to go to the June 25 uh, meeting of the Source Collection Authority. If there are any specific, um, I should mention there's also a specific memos and um, additions that we've attached to, to the report uh, that will be submitted to the ministry that they're asking or that they're responding to specific questions that the ministry had with regards to clarification on modeling and, and specific calculations on managed lands and so forth. Um, if there's any specific questions on the comments and how we responded to them, I'd be certainly uh, happy to, um, to answer those. Are there any comments, questions for Martin? Linda? Yeah, so no specific um, questions or comments to Martin. I just want, I just want to note that um, when I was reviewing the comments and I didn't note that there was a lot for Wellington and, and the center Wellington area, and I do appreciate the, the additional information with respect to some of the concerns addressed from the region. So that, that was helpful, but I just going through and knowing from my, my background and, and how in a lot of ways when we get comments and trying to satisfy the public. So the question, and I'm, I'm just throwing it out here for comment. So it's, it's on the record that I was asking, how do we know or if they're satisfied? And I understand from, from Kyle that, that some you may respond to for various reasons, but in general, we're not always technically 100% sure that what we've addressed. And I don't have any concerns per se with, with the uh, comments in terms of how things were addressed. I, it's just going back to the public and, and what their thoughts and views on it are. So I understand that some may have been um, satisfied and others may not have been satisfied and, and um, that's all I was looking for. So thank you, uh, Martin, and thank you, Kyle, for that. The only other thing I might, might add, Linda, um, I wasn't sure whether we'd have delegations to the committee today to make sure that we heard if there were still some very significant ongoing concerns with what was being proposed. And um, there haven't been any, um, as, as, as you can see. Uh, I thought that the project team um, really did a, a good job in trying to address the concerns within the scope of what they could do. There were other concerns that were raised that were outside of the scope of the amendment. And I think that it's, it's been helpful that those have been brought forward to the committee, but it's not something the committee can address as part of this amendment. So I think that was very good. And I thought the report itself was, was very well done. The, the project team did do a lot of work to make sure that um, all the issues were addressed. And um, if there were people who wanted to uh, meet specifically, I know that there was um, follow some follow-up meetings for those who had requested that. So I'm, I'm hopeful that um, people understand how we're moving forward and, and are, are satisfied to the extent that we can deal with, with the issues at this point in time. Um, I think that um, originally the plan was to have come back to the last meeting uh, to take this forward and submit it to the province. And I think the, the extra time that the project team took to thoroughly address everything 
um, really was a, a very good thing. And it was a lot of work. I know that there were a lot of hours spent bringing this together. And I, I think that um, it really shows in the result. Thank and the you. other, pardon? I just said, thank you, Wendy. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, any other questions or comments? Seeing none, um, can I have a mover for this report? Ralph Kruger, seconder Eric Hodgins. Um, all those in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried unanimously, thank you. Um, that's the end of the reports. We have one item of business arising from the previous meeting in our follow-up to our question on um, rehabilitation activities at an aggregate operation within a vulnerable area of a municipal drinking water system that allows ponding of water. Olga, you had committed to getting something back for the committee. Is there any update on that? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, I can provide a brief status update uh, on that work. I was able to check in with staff uh, ahead of this meeting. Um, they've been actively reviewing and moving that forward toward a decision so that, as I understand, that work is moving really well. Uh, as I mentioned at the last meeting, I can't unfortunately guarantee the timing, but I just wanted to assure the committee that there is being, uh, there's been great progress made so far. Um, and we do hope to be in a position uh, soon to communicate a decision to the committee. Um, so that's just a, a very brief update on that. I, I did also wanna mention that I, I was able to look into uh, Andrew's comment from the last meeting. Um, Andrew, you'd mentioned that you'd submitted some input through the GRCA uh, on the approach to vulnerability and risk assessment as, uh, and that was as part of the ERO posting on our director technical rules uh, phase two amendments. Um, so I've been able to confirm with staff that they're indeed aware of those comments and the concern about you know, the, the current approach um, and are considering that in the context of both our director technical rule proposal as well as the local threat request. Um, so because we're still finalizing our decision on both of those items, on both the DTR amendments as well as the local threat, I can't comment in, in more detail on that specifically. Um, but I just wanted to say that, you know, I've, they are aware and, and we could certainly explore discussing that further down the line once those decisions um, by the ministry have been uh, communicated, if there's interest in doing that still at the time. So I'll, I'll keep that one on my radar and happy to revisit it. Um, as you know, we've received hundreds of comments through the ERO posting on the director technical rules and um, we don't, they're of course, they're all reviewed, they're all considered, but we don't uh, respond to each uh, individual comment uh, on the proposal, but that's not to say that we can't pick this up if there's some interest in looking at that specifically. Um, another avenue would be if, you know, you wanted to, uh, you know, have a further discussion, um, maybe if that's something we can arrange offline and, and perhaps even, you know, we I can work with Martin and uh, put something, um, if, if you send a request through me, for instance, I know our, our staff internally would work to respond in writing to that particular concern about vulnerability and risk assessment. So just, uh, that, that's it for my update. Just wanted to say that I uh, was able to track that down. Thank you very much, Olga. Is there any other business for the committee today? Paul? Hi, Wendy, I don't mean to talk so much. Just circling back to that Conservation Authority Act uh, amendments and so on. You said at the bottom there, Martin, in your report that uh, the source protection staff were gonna be working with GRCA staff and there was gonna be a report going to the GRCA board. Um, this committee, I guess, is not taking a position on this and you're not representing something. I, I'm just asking, you know, are you representing something on behalf of this committee in that report? Um, thank you, Paul. Uh, and I should have been maybe more clear on that uh, through you, Wendy. Um, yes, we, we made a decision that because it's a proposal under the CA Act, that it would be the, the, the authority, like the, the Grand River Conservation Authority, 
and through through the board where the specific uh, report and recommendation and comments will be made to the ministry. Um, and specifically because there is no um, no no changes to the Clean Water Act and, and its regulation. Uh, we didn't think it was necessary for the committee and myself as, as, as to, to submit separate comments. But certainly my uh, like staff level input, I'm working uh, closely with uh, staff at the GRCA obviously, uh, to bring the comments forward uh, into the board report uh, that the GRCA will consider uh, next Friday. And that will be then submitted to the province. Does that um, satisfy and, the question? And, and my understanding, Martin, is that the the comments that you presented to the committee today will be the, the they will be substance of the comments that would go forward with the um, yeah. conservation authority report so that this committee has the information. We've had an opportunity to comment on those comments and um, it would go forward um, as part of the GRCA report. Correct. Does that help, Paul? Yeah, yeah, it does, Wendy. I just, the only thing I'm getting at here is, I'm not sure where we stand as a committee um, because but, a few different views put forward as to whether the conservation authority should have the ability to levy or not. And, and I'm, not, I'm not arguing either way at this, this point. What I'm trying to do is understand that, um, Martin, you can give some technical comments, but you can't say anything on behalf of the committee, I guess, because this committee hasn't made a decision or taken a stand. Is that true? That's correct. My, my, my comments will be staff level comments, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Now, we, I don't know, I mean, we will receive the, the phase two at some point too, the, with regards to I mean, the discussion that the committee had earlier during the meeting was specifically about, you know, levy and, and how that's all going to work out. Um, certainly we don't know the, the details of that. So I expect we will be bringing forward more information once that is being released by the province. Sure. And I'm expecting we will have further discussions on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, Paul. Thanks. Um, you're welcome. Um, any other other business? Seeing none, I I asked Martin whether our September meeting um, is likely to also be a, a Zoom meeting or a virtual meeting, and it looks most certainly like it will be, so that we won't um, have an opportunity for an in-person meeting yet. But I know Zoom meetings are good, but I, th I think in-person meetings are a lot better. And I know a lot of people share that opinion. So um, maybe by the end of the year or hopefully early next year at the latest. So thank you very much. And um, can I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, Wendy, just, just, oh, could just, I have a moment? Sure. It's Tom. Oh, I'm could sorry, I have Tom. That's okay. This is, this is your last meeting and, and we're gonna miss you. So well, go ahead. Thank, thank you. Um, I'm not sure you actually will, but- <laughs> Oh, I think so. <laughs> and anyway, I just wanted to thank everybody. Um, I have a much greater appreciation for all the work that the original people have done uh, and staff uh, because uh, a lot of this stuff as a lay person is way beyond me. Uh, but having sat here for four years and listened to those people who do have the technical knowledge, I have great confidence in your ability for to do the right things uh, with this. So um, it's been an education for me, and I want to thank you all for the for the opportunity and keep keep up the good work. There's still lots to be done. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much, Tom. Peter, you've got a hand up on your screen. Oh, I was Plotting. just applauding for- uh, Oh, you were applauding, okay. Tom's, uh, Tom's participation and we really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. I hope you're seeing the other applause around the screen too, Tom. Um, seeing no more business, um, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Lloyd? 
and Andrew seconds. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you very much and have a good summer and um, we'll see you in September. Thank you, Wendy and all the staff. Can you do a good job? It's Bill Strauss. Have a good Thank summer. Thanks, Bill. Thank you.